Hey guys, today we're taking a closer look at the Ultra Human Ring Air. We've been testing these two rings for a while now and wherever possible comparing them to our Garmin watch health trackers. Let's do a deep dive into what we've discovered and how we like the smart rings in general. Let's talk about what's on our hands. Literally, I've been rocking the Bionic Gold version size 10 going head to head with my Garmin Forerunner 265. Meanwhile, our editor was testing the Space Silver variant in combination with her Garmin Venu 2 Plus. Before we get into the nitty gritty, it's just fair to highlight the surprisingly lightweight design. If compared to our Garmin watches, which are considerably bulkier, the Ultra Human Ring Air offers a completely new form of health tracking. Weighing approximately 2.4 to 3.6 grams, depending on size, as comparison to our wedding band, which is almost two times heavier. So needless to say, we were eager to test them out. Choosing the right size was a bit of a nail biter. They sent over this cool little box with the sample rings to try on. They matched the real things in width and thickness, but I wish they made each ring the same weight as the corresponding real ones for complete accuracy. We took several days to find the best fit, considering it's a bit more challenging here in Singapore. The climate here fluctuates between heat and humidity outdoors and dry cooler temperatures indoors, causing our finger sizes to keep changing. All in all, I think we found a good fit for both of us. All right, let's chat about the Ultra Human Ring Air that's been on our radar and our fingers for the past couple of months. Looking at 349 US dollars, it isn't your average daily purchase. But here's the best part. There are no subscription fees. In the market where additional costs are almost the norm, it's refreshing to see a smart ring that doesn't require ongoing payments to access the full suite of features. Let me go through some pros and cons that we've discovered while using this ring daily for close to two months. Starting with the design, the ring is coated with a hard and durable tungsten carbide coating on the outside and a smooth resin on the inside, which feels a bit weird at the beginning, but we got used to it within a couple of days. And now the ring is so comfortable that for the most part, we don't even really notice it. Even the little protrusion on the inside is discreet enough not to bug me. However, we soon realized that wearing the ring during heavy weight workout or carrying heavy metal objects is not advisable. It's not just about scuffing the ring, it's about the real possibility of pinching the finger. Talking about scuffing, we're trying to keep it as true to life as possible, so they don't really guard them. So here it is how they look after about two months of use. Beyond its sleek design, the ring comes with quite a lot of different features, starting from sleep monitoring, movement index, cardiovascular fitness, skin temperature, heart rate, foot macros, and even workout mode, which is currently still in beta. For me, the sleep tracking is a standout feature. It's pretty on par of what Garmin watches offer, and its compact size is a game changer. You get all the insights without the bulk of the watch. Another feature that I found very useful was the weekly insights. After about two weeks of wearing the ring, and once it calibrates to an individual's body, you'll start receiving these personalized weekly insights. It gives you things like sleep index trends with further details on what has improved and what needs improvement. Same goes for the recovery index and movement index. It's basically like a bird's eye view of your overall health data. One feature that we've probably underutilized is the expansive discover section, where they offer all sorts of beginner guides, workouts, health podcasts, meditation resources, sleep collections, and even music for various purposes. If you're into things like that, you'll surely find a great resources for wellness information for times when you feel motivated to do some more. The app itself offers plenty of motivational boosters, like smart goals that you can find in the home section or even direct chat with performance coaches. I have to admit though, I haven't exactly nailed all the smart goals myself. After trying it for a few days, they kind of fell off my radar, but they might just be the thing to keep you on track. I was also very happy to see that Ultra Human constantly keeps adding new features left and right. Recently, they've added Ultra Human X Store with the newly launched Blackout Sleep Mask, and now they've added additional pregnancy insights where your health data gets translated through your pregnancy journey. It's cool and innovative, but please do take this information with a pinch of salt. Always speak to a qualified doctor on any health-related questions you might have. Personally, I prefer using technology as an additional sensor and data collector to manage my health rather than drive it. Having said that, the ring is not without its drawbacks. But first, if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more videos like this. One of the first annoyances was the number of notifications you get bombarded with. 
it would be great to have more control over these alerts, to choose which ones to keep and which ones to silence. Muting the app entirely kind of defeats the purpose, as you miss out on a lot of its functionality. So being able to set personalized nudges would be a significant improvement. One of such notifications is the low battery warning that gets triggered as soon as the battery reaches 30% and then just keeps sending you constant reminders throughout the day. Ideally, it would have been great to get the ring to notify you when it's under one day of battery life left and then maybe the last five or 10% rather than every few percent change while under 30% battery life. Additionally, in our samples, the battery life varies between the gold and the silver models. Check out this graph we put together, tracking every charge since we began our test. For the silver ring, the charging was done more frequently, roughly every four to seven days, mostly when they still had double digit battery life remaining. This is due to the previously mentioned frequent loan battery reminders that irritated my editor. For the gold ring, the charging was done approximately seven to nine days, which is surprisingly good results. I usually waited for the battery to go below 10%. On December 21st, we charged both rings at the same time for more accurate battery drain test. And as expected, the silver ring charged faster, but lasted two days less. If you look closely, the silver ring actually shows a degree of inconsistency in charging times, suggesting it may not be the best representation of the model. Similar issue that happens only with the silver ring is detecting false naps. This happens during various inactive moments, like when working at the desk, watching TV, or just having a peaceful chit chat with friends. In the app, it does let you to correct the information when you click no on the nap card, so it doesn't skew your data at least. And Ultra Human Representative has confirmed that they are actively working to resolve these false detections. When it comes to the exercise tracking, the ring requires the phone to be nearby and unlocked, which isn't always practical or safe, especially in the public spaces like gyms. It's fine and feels pretty comfortable when using all kinds of activities apart from lifting weights. Due to the slight bulkiness of the ring, it gets painfully pressed into the skin, so after a couple of tries, we started to leave the rings behind. We've also tested it for swimming since it's rated as water resistant up to 100 meters depth. The tracking there is pretty basic. You'll need to go to your timeline, tap activity and search for swimming. It'll prompt you to select start time and end time and it will track only the heart rate. In comparison, Garmin tracks all of these stats and way more. So overall for activities, we would probably not consider replacing our Garmin watches. Let us know in the comments below can you think of activity where the smart ring would actually be better than the smart watch? After wearing the ring daily for about a month, I noticed a bit of a reaction on my skin. So I moved it onto my index finger, hoping for a change. After about a month, the skin under the ring started to feel rough again and even began to split a little bit. It seems like this might be because the skin is drying out under the ring. We were advised to keep the hands moisturized and make sure that the finger is dry before wearing the ring. Some people's skin might also react to wearing anything for too long. So in my case, frequent finger swapping has helped. So when weighing in all the pros and cons, it's clear that the smart ring is a significant player in the health tech arena. The absence of subscription fees combined with its advanced features makes it a compelling choice for those seeking for a detailed and convenient health tracker. Naturally, like with any product, there are some drawbacks like the frequent and somewhat overwhelming notifications and the limitations in exercise tracking. These are some of the points to consider. However, I felt that continuous updates and additions to its features showcases the brand's commitment to innovation and improving user experience. What's your take with smart rings versus the smart watches for health tracking? Do you see the Ultra Human Ring Air as a game changer or would you stick with the more traditional devices like smart watches? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I hope you found this useful. Don't forget to smash that thumbs up and subscribe for more. We'll see you guys in the next one.